by looking at the ethnic claims people make over the land of Palestine. Joseph was of the opinion that the Jewish people have a claim over the land of Palestine because they've had an existence in this land for thousands of years, which everyone accepts. Everyone agrees to that claim. Uh, that claim, as far as it goes to um, to highlight the point that the Jewish people have been there for a very long time. My contention was in response that that claim does not justify the current atrocities that are taking place on that land. Okay, uh, the atrocities against the people, uh, uh, no against <laughs> against the Palestinians and the Jewish people. I agree. There are Jewish innocent victims of terrorism, and there are Palestinian victims of terrorism. There are children, women, men, elderly dying on daily basis in Palestine, being bombed, being being shot, being completely decimated. Okay, I'm saying none of these claims that go back thousands of years justify the current occupation, the current brutal occupation of the land of Palestine. It cannot be justified. Yeah, wa alaykum salam. Wa alaykum salam. No problem. No, no. Wa alaykum salam. Can't say wa alaykum salam because he thinks I might have wished death be upon him. Salam alaykum. Which I did. I said assalamu alaykum, and he refuses to say wa alaykum salam. But thank you. Now I'm gonna say wa alaykum salam. Thank you, Aki. Thank May you. peace be upon you. I'll say it in the okay, English language yeah. so that people don't misunderstand. Okay, I, 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 I'm saying assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you. No problem. He's, he's still he's still our brother. He's he's he's, he's, he's he's a bit lost. He's our brother. He's a bit lost, but he's our brother. And our purpose here, our purpose here, our purpose here is to spread the love, spread education spread beautiful ideas so that we can yeah. live together in peace. So Amen. today we were talking about history. So in during this discussion when we were talking about uh, the claim of the Zionists over the land of Palestine, uh, a lot of points were raised by Joseph, by myself. We talked about history, uh, the, the presence of the Jewish people in that land and then the absence after the Roman destruction of the city. I'm being filmed, I can't, sorry. Uh, uh, the destruction of uh, the city of Jerusalem at the hands of Emperor Hadrian in 132 and renaming of the city, all of that we discussed. Now we're coming to the point uh, where I made a claim that the Jewish people were protected by Muslims and the Muslim civilization for over a thousand years, right? And Joseph came back and he said, no, I don't agree with that. Actually, that claim is problematic. And then I said, now we are talking. Why? That's because this is, said. Said, this is get a camera. Yes. <laughs> after, after I said that, get a camera so that we can get this on camera. Where a Jew and a Muslim can talk about the the treatment of the Jewish people at the hands of the Muslims throughout the history of Muslim civilization. This is a very very interesting discussion which I want to get into. Uh, so, so and you, no no because me and Joseph are talking. You can talk, talk, talk later on. Ask questions. So Joseph, end. why do you why do you actually? disagree with that claim. My claim is that the Jewish golden age was when the Muslims protected the Jews for over a thousand years. Of course you'd say that, you're Muslim. <laughs> but I, I, I come to it. But my, so, so, my, 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 respond, my, my, respond to what, to what yes, you please. So one of the things that um, people that uh, either Muslim apologists propagating Dawah do, they will take a point in history and they'll say it was great at this time Therefore, throughout history, the Muslims were good to the Jews. And that's simply not true. There were Muslims that oppressed Muslims throughout history. So, of course, there were Muslims that oppressed Jews throughout history. Okay. So, I'll give you an example. Um, in Morocco, you had a caliphate called the Almohads. Khawarij. And they said to the Jewish people that were living there, um, either you convert to Islam, which is against Islam, you're going to tell me the Quran says that it doesn't say that, but either, either convert to Islam or we kill you. So Jews fled en masse from Morocco and they went um, they went to um, like Egypt, they went to various places, usually under other Muslim caliphates that were more favorable to the Jews. And so first and foremost, there has never been just a consistent period throughout time for all um, Muslim caliphates, empires where the Jews had it good. The second aspect of that is 
even when times were great for Jews under the Muslim Caliphate, it was relative. Were they ever it was, great? It was that's what I'm trying to get to. Okay. It was relative. Okay. And they were still second class citizens. They still had a different tax system. They still weren't allowed to achieve certain positions within that Islamic society. They had greater freedoms and opportunities than in Christendom. But that's not necessarily a good thing, because in Christendom, again, some Christian nations were good to the Jews, others were terrible to the Jews. And so it just depended at which point of history and which rulers you're talking. So categorically, you are wrong if you said that Muslims were always good to the Jews. They weren't. Secondly, Did I, I make argue... that claim? No. Okay, so what was Did I say always? No. You said that the Jews... Okay, what was your statement? I said the well, Muslim civilization the treated the Jews with utmost respect. And I just gave you examples where they uh, didn't. Okay. When I, when I made a general claim, which is based upon the general history of the Muslim civilization. Now, if you show me exceptions to that general rule, I will acknowledge the exceptions, but the exceptions do not represent the general behavior of the Muslim civilization, which, which, which goes um, which goes across over a thousand years. So, so let's okay, so let's let's look at your examples you so gave. So, so, wait, 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 wait. Okay, you you raised some very interesting examples, and this is why I believe uh, someone as intelligent as as you ought to better because you are a well-read Jewish uh, 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 gentleman, and uh, I, I can see you are. I can see you are uh, religiously observant. The mics are growing. He's got three mics. I've got none. <laughs> you take that one. You take that one. There you go. Don't worry. Okay. So, so the point I want to pick on is what al muwahidun in the Arabic language or al mohads in the English language did to the Jewish people. Before I get to that example, my contention is: Why would you use, for example, ISIS, for example, ISIS as a representative example for Islam? Okay, only two kind of people do that to, to Muslims today, right? One, who are completely ignorant of the history of Muslim civilization. Two, who hate Islam, who completely hate Islam and want to deliberately tarnish the name of Islam and Muslims. There is no third option in my mind. So I will assume the better, uh, the, I'll assume, assume the best thing for you that you are ignorant about the history of Muslim civilization. I won't assume the latter for you, right? I don't think you are a Islam or Muslim hater. I don't think so. No, I'm not I, I hope you're not. First okay. and foremost, I'm not a Muslim hater. I have used Great. For Islam. So it's confirmed. Have, but I would yeah. like to extend that. Mm. I say Muslims as my cousin. Good. But, and I believe that we should have, we should work towards building a lasting peace. I, I agree. With peace, I believe it's truth and reconciliation. Okay. I believe for us to make peace, neither you nor I should deny the reality of what's happened. Absolutely. And I will say there have been Muslim leaders who've done incredible acts of kindness for the Jewish people. However, even, now we're talking. even amongst the most, um, those that are considered the great... So let me give so some examples. No, 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 no. I want to talk about al mohads because you made a point okay, okay. and, and so it's, it's only fair that I, I respond to that point. So uh, al muwahidun were an extremist group that came to power in Morocco in the 12th century. And Muslims suffered at their hands before anyone else did. And in fact, when they did persecute Muslims, Christians, as well as Jews, who protected the Jews, who gave refuge to the Jews, Muslims elsewhere. Let me give you an example, a specific exa example. Who is known as the second Moses in Jewish history? Maimonides. Maimonides. Maimonides faced the al mohads firsthand. Maimonides was alive, born in Cordoba, raised in Cordoba, wrote in the Arabic language. His famous book, A Guide for the Perplexed, was written in the Arabic language uh, in Hebrew characters. He was a scholar of Judaism, who is known as the second Moses in Jewish history. He was so important that he was given this title. And he wrote Jewish commentaries on uh, the Torah, and he flourished in a Muslim society. Now, al mohads came on the scene, and they forced him to accept Islam, which we wholeheartedly condemn. Muslims are condemning that. How do we know that? Maimonides, having pretended to accept Islam, moved to Egypt. Now, when he went to Egypt, he went back to Judaism. And then there, the judges put him on trial 
for apostatizing from Islam. What happened? He goes to court and who testifies? Who testifies in his favor? A Jewish scholar from Spain who was being persecuted by al mahads al muwahidun who were an extremist group which other Muslims were condemning at that time, like we do today with ISIS, yeah. right? He moved to Egypt. There, Muslims came to rescue him and they said his conversion was forced. Therefore, it was not a conversion. That rule does not apply on him and he was let he was left alone and he became what he became a physician directly to the brother of the sultan the sultan's brother was malik al afdal the brother of sultan salahuddin ayubi saladin okay so he was protected by the muslims against a persecution by the muslims okay so this is very clear this is uh, the example you gave didn't actually help your case. Second, Second example, very quickly you, you made, was that when the Jews did have good times with the Muslims, that was relative, okay? It depends. They were still second-class citizens. I, I want to correct you there. I want to assume the best about you again, that you are completely ignorant of what happened so in can Spain. Can I yeah, no, no, because you raised two points. So let me quickly respond to it, then you can come back to it, okay? I will respond to Joseph by giving him a number of examples. This claim again is completely misplaced, doesn't acknowledge history of Islam and Muslims with the Jewish people. There were Jewish prime ministers in Spain. Is everyone listening to me? Hello? Yes? There were Jewish prime ministers in Spain. How do you make someone who is a second class citizen a prime minister? Is a question. And who, who am I talking about? Hazda ibn Shaprut. He was the prime minister to the most powerful Muslim monarch in the history of Western Europe. Abdurrahman III in the 10th century, Hazda ibn Shaprut was so powerful that he was writing letters to the ancestors of Joseph who were in Khazaria. Joseph is an Ashkenazi Jew. Okay, his ancestors come from Khazaria. Okay, well, well, that's not true. We no. know that that's, that's categorically false. But there are, okay, this is something we can come back. That's not anti Semitism, by the way. That's, it is. It's I mean, the Jewish people you mean Ashkenazi Jews? Oh, Ashkenazi Jews are from the Middle East. I've got Middle Eastern DNA. I can show you. Oh, but the, how is that anti Semitism? To say that because you're denying the Jewish agency of the Jews. It's a, it's a myth that's propagated predominantly by anti Semites that Ashkenazi Jews are not real Jews. But if, from if, if it is an academic opinion, uh, you can disagree with it. You can say it's, it's rubbish. It can, it's, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, I'm not saying the opinion is true or not. We can talk about it another time, but I'm just presenting the opinion. It may well be very unpleasant, but to call it anti-Semitism, I, I don't Okay, I don't agree with that. But anyway, so, so Hazda ibn Shaprut was writing letters to the king of Khazaria. Uh, this was a group of people in, uh, you know, uh, near Georgia, current day Georgia, who had come to Judaism, who, who had embraced Judaism. Uh, and the entire state became uh, Jewish after the king himself. The king had accepted Judaism or embraced Judaism. His name was King Joseph. So Hazda no, ibn Shaprut was writing letters to him. He was writing letters to the Jewish people of Baghdad, uh, whether they need anything from him. He's in a powerful position. Likewise, there was another prime minister called Samuel Hanagit. Samuel Hanagit was a prime minister in Granada, which was also a Muslim state. And I can give you a list of Jewish scholars, dignitaries, ministers, poets, uh, philosophers, uh, theologians um, who were flourishing under the rule of Islam in Spain, in North Africa, in Ayyubid, um, Ayyubid Middle East, and as far as Mughal India, as far as Mughal India. So what are we talking about here? Uh, the, so the Jewish condition was very much pleasant and if you come back with more claims, then I will respond to them accordingly. Go ahead. So you touch on, you look at this. This is this is how it works. You get your sound bite, then the camera disappears. What? Okay, I don't know. His mic is his yeah. mic is still with me. I don't know where he's going. Maybe yeah. he's, he's, he's Maybe changing his position. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned a few things, and the first one I want to talk to is perfect. You mentioned Maimonides, Harambam, or oh, the mic's going. We've lost the uh, we've lost the crowd. Sorry, YouTube. Um, so no, no, there are two cameras here. There's, there's still two cameras here. So don't um, be disappointed. So you mentioned that after fleeing the Almohads, Maimonides went to Egypt. He, he went. He moved. He, he lived in Fustat, which I think is near Cairo today. And now he lived there, 
and there's a myth that's propagated by many, many Muslims that he had a great existence. He loved living there. It was good for Why him. Why is that a myth? Because I'm going to read you his own words that he wrote there while he was living there. Okay. So this is from something, people can Google it, called the Gerrit Teman, which is the epistle to Yemen. To Yemeni Jews. To the Yemeni Jews. Okay. So it is fact, highly doubted, by the way. No, Le not. Actually, the letter, the content of the letter is myth. It is not, it is not, it is not confirmed whether this letter can be traced back to Maimonides. We will, we will discuss that. We'll come back to that. So, so before you use the source against me, um, please ensure that the source is actually authentic. What we do know... Okay, what were your sources for Hastay Shaprut? What was your sources for um, Shmuel Hanagid? What was your sources for all of them? Jewish writings as well as Muslim writings. No, no, no. Which, Jewish which, as well as Muslim which, writings. Which Jewish writings? With Jewish writings? No, which ones? I have read a book titled The History of the Sephardic and Mitzrayi Jewry. Let me give it. And uh, the author's name is Zion Zohar, Jewish author who has written the history of the Sephardic and Mitzrayi Jewry. The, the name of the book is the history of the Sephardic and Mitzrayi Jewry. Zion Zohar is the author. Then Bernard Lewis, also a Jewish historian, right? So any sources I will use mainly they are Jewish sources, so, so Jewish historians. This is, this is the and interesting part. I'm actually bringing something which Jews universally accept as being authentic. You've read two books by contemporary No, scholars. no, no, two. I have, okay, you want yeah. more names? No, you no, want no, a no. list? All, all I'm trying to do okay, so Just Most because I mentioned two doesn't mean I know. Jews, there, there, yeah. there are very few religious Jews that doubt the authenticity of the Agera. You, you're saying otherwise, and that's fine because you've read a book, and that's fine. I've read a couple of books, or a few books, but I'm going to read what Maimonides actually says in his words. Okay. Now, you can cast doubt on that just like... We, we don't know. Scholars. Maimonides actually said that. We don't know. When there's a doubt, What's the point of reading something? If I say Prophet Muhammad said X, Y, and Z, and if we cannot prove whether he said it or not, but the what's the point? The only person who's casting doubt is you. Which, who says can, that this okay, is false? Okay, can you, can you, can you give us the source as to? I just give you, give it to man. It's, it's accepted universally as being written by Maimonides. Who You're saying it isn't, so I'm saying what's your evidence that it isn't? Who says it isn't? Scholars. Which histo scholars? Historians. Which historians? Okay, this is something I will... Okay, you don't know, so you can come back. No, 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 no. In the YouTube yeah, comments, no, no, you can no, say no. where... I, I, I will come back to you yeah. on this, because okay. I... This so discussion, until then, I didn't, until then, I didn't come... Going, until then, I'm going to... I didn't come prepared money. for this discussion. Yeah. Neither if you did want, I, neither if did you I, want, neither yeah, did I. There are references I have. Okay, if you raise okay, a specific okay, question, we can come back to it. No problem. One thing I want to point out. You spoke for... 15 minutes, 10 minutes, I didn't say a word. Okay, so... I spoke... B before the minute, we... No, no, the minute I spoke, you started challenging, saying that's not real, that's not oh, real. Oh, no, that's okay, no problem, go ahead. So, yeah. what I'm that's fair. is what Maya Monides actually says in his words. Now, this is half uh, well into it, but effectively what's happening, there was um, Jews in Yemen who were considering v converting to Islam, and he wrote a letter to the, the leader of that community, and this is effectively what he, he wrote. This is well into it. Remember, my co-religionists, that on account of the vast number of our sins, God has hurled us into the midst of this people, the Arabs, who have persecuted us severely. So Maimonides, who is your example of someone who... Carry on reading. Carry on reading. Yeah, please. I, I want you to read this now. This is actually helping me, by the way. We'll see how and passed beautiful and discriminatory legislation against us. Hmm. As scripture has forewarned us, hmm. our enemies themselves shall judge us. Hmm. Never, did a na na never did a nation molest, degrade, debase and hate us as much as they. Therefore, when David of blessed memory, inspired by the Holy Spirit, envisaged the future tri tri tribulations of Israel, he bewailed and lamented their lot only in the kingdom of Ishmael and prayed in their behalf um, and on and on it goes but no 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 c c continue. I, I want you to continue reading a, f a bit more it's, 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 few more lines continue what do you expect it to say continue okay. yeah why are you reading it for, before you I mean, keep reading keep reading keep reading Keep it. Of Israel. No, no, no. Start from where you start. Stop. That's yeah. it. I'm just going yeah. to yeah. be well yeah. and lamented the lot in the kingdom of Ishmael and prayed on their behalf for their deliverance, as is implied in the verse. Woe me that I sojourn with Meshech, that I dwell beside the tents of Kedar. Note the distinction between Kedar and the children of Ishmael. For the they carry on. Carry on. It's actually helping yeah. me. Carry on. Carry on. This is going to get. Carry on. Please do. 
Yep. Listen, you brought this up. I didn't bring it up. For the Meshuggah and is of the lineage and children of Kedar, mm. as they readily admit. Yes. Daniel alludes only to our humiliation and degradation. Mm. Like dust in the threshing, suffered at the hands of the Arabs. Mm. May they speedily be vanquished when he says, and some of the host of the stars it cast down to the ground and trampled upon them. Mm. Although we dishonored by them beyond human endurance mm. and had to put up with their fabrications, Yet we behave like him, who is depicted by the, sorry, I'm not a good reader, by the inspired writer. But I am as a deaf man. I hear not, and I am as dumb man that, sorry, I am as dumb, I am as a dumb man that openeth his mouth. Similarly, our sages instructed us to bear the provocations and preposterousness of Ishmael in silence. So on and on and on it goes. I, okay. I don't want to bore the audience by reading okay. all of it. But so, the basic, so, no, no, you spoke, I speak. The basic premise, after he made me read all that really bad, I apologise, but the basic premise is Adnan said that the Almohads were bad, I accept that. Maimonides is my proof that the Muslims treat the Jews well, because Maimonides, when he fled the Almohads, he had a Muslim testify for him in court, which is true. And, is true. He, and he achieved great position of prominence in Islamic society, which true. is true. He was the physician to even to Salahuddin, I believe, by the end of his career. But even Maimonides, someone who we look at as an example of somebody who existing at a high level in Islamic society, when he's writing to his own people, he's honest. And he says that the, the, the Muslims have inflicted persecution upon us. They, we have suffered greatly. His words are, no nation has um, persecuted us more than this nation. Okay. So this is clearly, clearly, and even, like, you put forward the argument that it's been fake. The fact that this has been universally accepted by Jews as being part of the narrative suggests there must be a, a remnant of truth in there, that there was persecution of Jews in Muslim society. Now, let's get on to what is that persecution. Okay. Can and I... you, no, you made two points. Yeah. I made two points and you made two sure, points in response. Sure. Now you said, and maybe this is where we can make it a little more engaging because the big long speeches don't really help any yes, of us engage the I, viewers. I agree. So I'm going to say, I can give categoric examples of where I'm persecuted against in a, a caliphate that's run according to Sharia, according to the Sunnah of Muhammad. And my best example, my easiest example, Zakat. Zakat is fixed. Yeah, there is a fixed amount of money that the Muslims pay. Jizya is not fixed. Jizya is dependent upon whatever the caliph decides that the Jew is going to pay, or the person of the book is going to pay. Now, under some caliphates, that was a reasonable amount. And it does say that the poor don't have to pay the, the, the jizya. But if they're not poor, then it's down to the, the caliph to determine what the Jews pay, what the Christians pay. And that is separate from what the Muslims pay. And it can be a lot more. And it can be less. It really depends on the caliphate. And so when you segregate a society and you say Muslims pay this tax and non-Muslims pay another tax, that ultimately is an example of discrimination that has been abused throughout history. Okay, I'm Great. Get more quick fire. Great points. Now coming back to the letter of Maimonides, first of all we need to show whether the letter is actually authentic. Even if it is authentic, let's assume for, 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 for the sake of the argument, Maimonides actually wrote that letter. There is no problem in it. I'll tell you why. Maimonides has been severely persecuted by a Muslim group called Al Mohads, Al Mawahidun, right? If a person who was tortured or persecuted by ISIS today and was to write a letter about Muslims, I wouldn't blame him. I wouldn't blame him for, for, for assuming that I am being persecuted by Muslims because these people have the appearance of Muslims, unfortunately, right? Now Maimonides, the question is, when he wrote this letter, where was he writing this letter from? Egypt. Egypt, okay. Now what period of his Egyptian um, uh, existence was this was it the, was this the early period when he had recently come from Spain having been persecuted and put through all that or was it actually after he had become the physician to the Sultan himself okay if Maimonides is writing Maimonides is writing this letter after he's a physician to the Sultan the doctors to the Sultan then there are two options here. either he is lying about his condition because how can you be the physician to the Sultan 
the doctor to the Sultan, the, to the king himself, and say, our condition is very bad. And it is very possible that he was lying. Why? Because why is he writing this letter? And who is he writing this letter to? According to what Joseph read, this letter was being written to a Jewish group of people in Yemen who were considering accepting Islam, who were contemplating becoming Muslims. And his job as Rambam or the second Moses or the, the shepherd of the flock, uh, uh, you know, if you like, his job was to sway them, to put them off, to push them away from Islam. And to say all those things, it does exactly that. These people are barbari barbarians, they're persecutors, we're not happy with them, da 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 Don't accept Islam, therefore. So all these things put together, one can easily contextualize the letter. But looking at the big, bigger picture, now, it is very clear that Joseph accepted that Maimonides definitely had a high position in Muslim societies. If the Jews were persecuted as he claimed earlier, why would a Jew be a physician to the Sultan? Why would a Jewish person be given that position? And such a sensitive position, who is a physician? Someone who's checking your pulse, someone who's prescribing medicine for you, even possibly giving you medicine. He can easily poison the Sultan and kill him. Why would the Sultan trust a Jewish man and not only any ordinary Jewish man, a rabbi of that repute, a rabbi of that status, someone who is known as the second Moses among the Jews later on actually. So let's not be anachronistic about history. So it is very clear that he had a high position. Now it doesn't stop there. We can look at other Jewish testimonies from Spain. No, very quickly. No, no, yeah, let me finish this. Yeah, very quickly. Yeah. There was a Jewish rabbi called Bahia bin Pakuda. Have you heard of him? Yes. You know Bahia, yeah? Bahia bin Pakuda writing in Cordoba 1080s. He writes that our living condition is not the same as the Muslims. It is better than theirs. We are more prosperous than the Muslims are under the rule of the Arabs. There you go. That's one testimony. Let's, let's fast forward. Yeah, let's fast forward. Okay. We have, for example, in the ninth century, okay, there is um, uh, an anonymous Jewish source, a commentary on the Torah, okay, it's called P Petra Saffron. Petra Saffron, Karen Armstrong, she refers to this book in her History of Jerusalem. And she states that this anonymous author, Jewish author, wrote about the conditions of the Jewish people in Jerusalem in the ninth century, during the uh, Abbasid period. Uh, he states that we have been honored by the Ishmaelites that we worship together the same God in this holy place. In other words, he was praising the condition of the Jewish people under Islamic uh, domain. Then we have other testimonies from, uh, I'm giving you different dynasties very quickly because time is running out and Joseph needs to talk about this, yeah? And I have written an article on this, by the way. This is why I know these sources, yeah? Um, then we move forward to the Ottoman period when Jerusalem was governed by the Ottomans. To be very precise, during the reign of Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent, who governed from 1520 to 1566, if I'm not mistaken. Right, he governed 46 years. During his reign, the, the Jewish people flourished in Jerusalem. How do we know this? A scholar named Amnon Cohen, Amnon Cohen, who published his book in 1994, and the book is titled, A World From Within. The court records from the, the Islamic court of Jerusalem. In, this, in these two volumes, he discusses the history of the Jewish cases. Are you listening, everyone? Jewish cases filed within the Islamic court of Jerusalem. So he studied cases from the year 1500 to 1570. 70 years of cases he studied. He came up with 1,000 Jewish cases filed in the Sharia court, filed by the Jewish people voluntarily. And Amnon Cohen, being a Jewish scholar from Israel, he was he wanted to know why the Jews were doing that. Why were they going to the Sharia court, even though they had their Beth Dins, they had their own Jewish courts uh, in Jerusalem. But he states, this is a Jewish Israeli scholar in 1994. He states, based upon his study, this was because the Jews expected justice to come quicker 
from the Sharia court than their own courts. And cases vary from, uh, uh, from, uh, for example, from uh, a case about nafaka, what we call, uh, you know, provisions. Uh, if a wife has been divorced and she needs provisions from the husband, and uh, there are other domestic cases being discussed in these courts. So his conclusion is that the Jews of Jerusalem in the 16th century were more prosperous than the Muslims were. So perfect. So okay. 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 Wait, 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 wait. Of course, of course, of course, Jews. I mean, you, you don't do quick fire. Yeah. You really don't do quick fire. I'm, I'm, I'm finishing. I'm finishing because this topic is so important. What about the and yeah, but it's I'm coming back. I'm coming back. It's a card issue. Can, can we, can okay. We stop so and this, do these examples from different dynasties in different periods in different places show you what general pattern of Muslim behavior was kind, generous. And, and harmonious towards the Jews, right? The Jewish people flourished in different ways. I can give you examples. Can, 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 oh, Joseph, Joseph, examples. Joseph, Joseph, please. I was very patient listening to you. Be patient with me as well. I know some of this information is, is difficult to, to, to fathom. It's, it's yeah, but, wrong. But, but, <laughs> no, but I'm giving references. Uh, wrong, wrong, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jewish. most references I gave are from Jewish sources, by the way. Even Bernard Lewis, Never someone heard. like Bernard Lewis, a, a staunch Zionist, who advised the US government to attack Iraq in 2003. Even him in his book, Jews of Islam, acknowledges that the Muslims treated the Jews with generosity in comparison to what was happening to them in Christian Europe. Okay, so and over a thousand years, Bernard Lewis states, for over a thousand years, Jews survived extinction due to Muslim protection for over a thousand years. And he also states 90% of the Jewish population of the world survived destruction under the protection of Islam and Muslims. Bernard Lewis, again, my references are very clear. Go and check and come back to me if I'm lying. Okay, okay. now next point, Zakat. Can we come back yeah. to Zakat? Z no, 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 you raised it. You raise it. Please be patient with me. I'm finishing I, very soon and you can come back. I, I will listen to you patiently. No, you can't come in because it's me and Joseph. Okay, so zakat issue. Now Joseph made a claim that uh, zakat is fixed and jizya is not fixed. Actually, that's not true as well, because in our earliest sources, we are told firstly the primary rule to deal with the non-Muslims. What is the primary rule? In Bukhari, in Bukhari, we have a statement from the second caliph of Islam, Omar bin Khattab. Omar was the second caliph of Islam, and what did the Prophet say about him? Upon you is my way and the way of my rightly guided caliphs. Who were they? Umar is one of them. So we have to follow him. Umar upon his deathbed, when his stomach was split open, dying man, he advised, he advised for his successor. He stated, whoever succeeds me, beware of the rights of the non-Muslims. Do not overburden them. Do not put a burden upon them more than they can bear. Umar, the second caliph of Islam, the words of a dying man, right? These words were directly relevant to the Jewish people. Okay, because who was he talking about? He was talking about the Jews and the Christians. Okay, so what is jizya? Jizya is one gold coin per year. It is clearly stated in Futul Buldan, Imam, Bula, Imam Buladuri's uh, book, Futul Buldan, The Conquest of Lands. In that book, there are documents that clearly state that the jizya is one gold coin every year, which is four grams of gold in current value, 200 pounds a year. So if there is a millionaire Jewish merchant who has a million pounds in his bank account, in theory, theoretically, according to the Islamic sources, he has to pay 200 pounds every year. If a Muslim has a million pound in his bank account, he must pay 2.5%, which is 25,000 pounds. Where is justice in that? I, as a Muslim, can stand up here and say, you know what? Islam is actually not just to, uh, to the Muslim people. Islam is more just to the Jewish people. The, he, the Jewish merchant has to pay 200 pounds every year, even though he may have a million pounds in his bank account. But me, I have to give 25,000 uh, 25, pounds over or for a million pounds. Now, this is theoretically the earliest Islamic sources. What happened later on, no doubt, sources are abused, they were misused. Even today, groups like ISIS and other extremist entities are using sources to abuse. The, the Jewish people are doing it. Is The state of Israel is abusing, misusing, 
the Jewish me. sources. So we have extremists, we have uh, unpleasant characters, we have, we have people who abuse our sources throughout our history. Jews, are the, the Jews did it, Muslims did it, Christians did it. So the good thing about us, me and Joseph, is that we are brother, brothers in that thought. Why? Because he also believes that there are extremist Jews who do extreme things and abuse the sources. I also believe that there are Muslims who are extremist Muslims who abuse the sources. Now, okay, over to you. Sorry, okay. do, do apologize for okay. long, long, uh, no, long That was speech. supposed to be a quick fire round. <laughs> but yeah, your, your raging fine. points, it's, they need to be responded. It's fine. It's your fine. turn it's to fine. respond and then so my... what yeah. I want to point out is what just happened then. So, we went to the al Mohads and we agreed on the al Mohads. They're not good Muslims. We then, you brought a proof which was Maimonides. And we then established that actually your understanding of Maimonides maybe isn't the Jewish understanding of Maimonides. And the Jewish understanding of Maimonides is that he was persecuted under Islam. You then went to some very, um, a lot of material I haven't heard of. So you mentioned Petrus Ephron or something. Never heard of it in my life. So we're now talking very fringe sources which most Jews are not familiar with. So I will go away and read Bernard Lewis. Bernard Lewis is a, he's a historian. He's got nothing to do with the actual, I'm talking, about the source, story. I'm talking about the source material. I'm talking about the source material. Um, and then you mentioned, and you went, you went to the 16th century Ottomans in Israel. Now, I would encourage anybody to type into Google 1517 massacre of Jews in Hebron. The Jews were massacred by Ottomans in Hebron, in Israel. And so, again, at a time when you've given us Jews having a good <laughs> straight, uh, straight to the massacre. Um, at a time when Jews were supposed to not being persecuted, there's a clear evidence of not just persecution, but a massacre taking place in the very land you said it was supposed to be amazing. Now, I'm not, you've said a lot of truth. There were Jews that did achieve great positions, including Maimonides in Islamic society. But achieving a high position in some Islamic societies does not mean that Jews have been treated well throughout Islamic his, um, history. Jewish, the Jewish understanding, if you speak to any of the Jews from the Middle East, almost all of them will universally tell you that they suffered in modern history and in ancient history. And so I believe Jews and Muslims can and will coexist. I think we have more in common than that divides us. And I think we do have a rich history of coexistence. But I think there needs to be a recognition from many Muslims that history isn't as they see it through these rose-tinted glasses, but their ancestors have inflicted pain upon my ancestors. And you can go right the way back to Muhammad. You can go back to the Battle of the Trenches. You can go back to the beheading of Jews. You can go, but it's from the very, very beginning there has been persecution. Now you can justify that and say they were treacherous, they betrayed Muhammad, therefore, but to you're, this day- You're but, doing it for me. But to this day, to this day, because of a battle that took place hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago, I, a Jew, am not allowed to step foot in Mecca and Medina. I am not allowed to live in Arabia. Omar, who's quoted often as being one of the best caliphs for the Jewish people, Omar kicked the Jews out of Arabia. It was Omar that pushed them out and he actually sent them to Hebron in Israel. And he sent others to, I forgot the name, I'm terrible with Middle East and geography, something like, I'm not going to even it. People can look up the other you're, place. You're, you're, making a lo you're, you're making a lot of points and it's going to take me a long time to respond to all of them. So if you don't want a long response, keep it short and I'll keep it short. Okay. Yeah, because you're throwing Omar, you're throwing Jews in... Um, so, so all, you're, you're, all you're I'm throwing doing, a lot of things at All me. I'm doing is saying, and it's a very simple statement, that anybody who believes that the Jewish existence under Islam was consistently good is consistently stupid. There has been good times and bad times. There have been good Muslims and bad Muslims, good Jews and bad Jews. Um, now to bring it back to the jizya, you okay. said, no, 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 you didn't let me do this. No, no problem, no, continue, continue. Um, carry on. Then my response is gonna be... But try, try, I'm trying to keep mine as brief as possible, just okay. for the sake of the engagement of the audience. Okay. Um, no, no, go, so, go on long, extensively. Talk, so, talk about all so, the things I mentioned, all the, all, so, the, all the sources I gave. What's your response to those so sources? I'm, I'm gonna go to, so to be honest, I, I would have to go away and read them. So I know the epistle, I know Maimonides well. So if, if, if what I'm saying is true, you'll, you're going to we'll come, come back, back and, next week. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, come back and confirm absolutely. everything absolutely. I said. Okay, good. Absolutely. Um, but like the, 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 you mentioned one source, I don't think any Jew I know has heard of, Petros Efron. 
Uh, well, okay. Is that what is you call it? 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 Uh, I, I, I got the source from Karen Armstrong. She's not Jewish though, so... She's, she's, so, a, nun. So, she's a nun. No, no, so? Yeah. If she's not Jewish, that means she's lying? No, 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 I'm just okay. saying I don't know if she, this is something she that she's recognised. She's actually taught at a rabbinic school, by the way. I, I don't know if you know this. Karen Armstrong was teaching at a rabbinic school. I find and that she, hard to believe because okay. they're quite, well, they're quite going gender to, segregated going, rabbinic go, schools. Yeah, she was teaching at a rabbinic school. No, so, um, and, and you go to a rabbinic school, and the book, the book only, is which I find that the history of Jerusalem. Yeah, the history of Jerusalem. Uh, that's where I got the source Petra Shefron from, which she quoted in her book. So it is very clear. I mean, every single thing I'm quoting, please do ask me if you want to know okay. the source. But yeah. So, so Hadith, you mentioned that the, the jizya is one gold coin. That was your words, not mine. So I'm going to read you one of the hadith, and you can tell me if it's it's correct. Where, where is the source? So the source the is. Yeah, what website are you reading it from? Firstly, so tell, it, tell me the website. No, it's from uh, one of the hadith websites, Sunnah.com or whatever. I, no, no, no. I can't, this, I can't, this, no this is, this is not... I put together a spreadsheet. Okay. But, so I'll tell you where it is, and I'll tell you which book it is. Oh, good. So Muwatta Malik. Okay. Zakat, book 17, hadith 44. Zakat, book 17, hadith 44. Okay. Okay. So By the way, Martha is not all authentic. Okay, that's, that's fine. Okay. But this is what he says. Yahya related to me from Malik, from Nafi, from Aslam, the Mullah of Umar ibn al Khattab, that Umar ibn al Khattab imposed a jizya tax yeah, of. Yeah. Okay, go. Da, 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 da. Is it going to be a gold coin or is it going to be something else? Okay, okay. 40 right. dinars on those living where gold was the currency and 40 dirhams on those living and receive them as guests for three days. Now, first and foremost, all I'm doing here is stating that it wasn't one gold coin. And if you read this various hadith that talk about this, it literally depends where they're living. And they put conditions. So if you're traveling through a land, you're taxed at a different rate as if you live in that land. And so the belief that Jews pay a fixed gold coin is wrong. Okay. The people of the book, it, okay. it's according, according to Muwatta. Okay. I then also want to read why. Why the Jews pay the jizya? What does the Quran say? And how is that explained by the Hadith? So the Quran, and forgive me, I'm not my, an Arab. My, my response so my, is going my, to be very long. Uh, <laughs> beware, beware of the fact, yeah? So the, it's Quran, be very the long. Quran says Sagirun. Yeah, is that right? Sagirun, have I pronounced it right? And now, could you just give me the literal translation of Sagirun? Subdued. Subdued. So the, the, the people of the book will pay the jizya to be? Subdued. So. If you're subduing per somebody, that's not a positive thing. Imagine if the British government today said that the non-Muslims, they're going to pay 20% tax because we need the state needs to function, we need to feed the poor, we need that to would pay be the unfair. That would be unfair. The Muslims, we're going to charge them a separate tax so that they can be subdued. Imagine Theresa May gets up in Parliament and says the Muslims are going to pay a tax so they can be subdued. Um, now, are you done? Oh, nearly, nearly, okay, nearly. Nice. Um, anybody that tells you that jizya is a good thing is mistaken. What is a good thing is that me and my brother, Adnan, we pay the same tax. Muslim, Jew, we are the same under the eyes of the law. You want to pay I more? don't have a tax. To, we you want just to pay more. We just. Sorry, anyway, go on. We just, <laughs> sorry. Um, lost my chain of thought now. So it, under the eyes of the law, we should be seen as the same. There shouldn't be a tax to subdue me. There shouldn't be a Jew tax to subdue the Jew. There should be an equal tax. It should be proportional to our income, not our religion. Okay, very, very good. Joseph, I'll try to make it as quick as possible. Thank you. Right. Uh, firstly, coming to the pogroms against the Jewish people, he mentions 1517. I am perfectly willing to accept that it may have happened, although I have to yeah. go and check the, the, the circumstances around that. I'll give you other examples. I'll help Joseph in his case that there were definitely pogroms and massacres of the Jewish people throughout uh, the vast you know, period of Muslim history. And one, history one, well. one, one happened in 1066 in, in, uh, in Granada, in Spain, right? One happened possibly in 1517, what he's talking about. Two, there might be five or six or seven more examples. But if you look at these five, six, seven more examples, which may have some context to them, we don't know the context. Who did it? Why did they do it? They may be extremists. They may be some crazy nutters. But it, because one of the prime ministers, Samuel Harnaget, was actually killed during this program I'm talking about. He was the prime minister and he was killed in uh, 1066 uh, in Granada. 
So it, it's, it is very possible that these things happen. But the point I'm making is that the general pattern of Muslim behavior towards the Jewish people was kind, generous, to an extent that where Jewish people themselves are paying tributes to the Muslim tr treatment. I gave plenty of references earlier where the Jewish people are praising. For example, another example, Salonika. Salonika was an important Jewish center where the Jews flourished under the Ottoman rule. Why did the Jews come to Salonika is the question. Where did they come from? Can you remember that's my life? Now, when the Just Catholic remember, monarchs oh, remember to took it off, yeah, when you the to last the stronghold country. from the Muslims in Spain, Granada in 1492, then followed a heavy persecution of the Jews as well as the Muslims. The Inquisition came in. And where did these persecuted Jews go? They found refuge with the Ottomans in Salonika. And the Jewish people paid lavish tributes to the Ottomans for protecting them. Many Jewish people went to Jerusalem. I gave the sources. Amnon Cohen, read his book, published in 1994. The book is titled A World from Within. Amnon, A-M-N-O-N, Cohen, C-O-H-E-N, 1994. And read his conclusion about the Jewish treatment at the hands of the Ottomans. So the history of Islam and Muslims, when it comes to the treatment of the Jewish people, is so magnificent, despite all the unpleasant incidents that Joseph is referring to. I hope Joseph is not trying to brush aside all our positive contribution no, towards I, towards the well-being of the Jewish people. I've consistently okay. said there have been Muslims that have treated Jews very well and Muslims who have treated okay. Jews badly. That's my I'm argument. claiming mm -hmm. I'm claiming the overwhelming um, evidence. evidence of the the, uh, the treatment towards the Jewish people is positive. So why are there no right? Muslims Jews uh, left the Muslim okay. lands now? Okay. Well, well, that's a good question. Now, why would Joseph or other Jewish uh, researchers, uh, why would they put doubt on Muslim treatment of the Jewish people? Why would they even challenge it, having known that the Jewish people generally flourished under the protection of Islam? To an extent that people like Bernard Lewis, scholars like Bernard Lewis, who was openly hostile to Islam and Muslims, okay, he even wrote the book, What, what Went Wrong with the Arabs, okay? Uh, he acknowledged that for over a thousand years, ten centuries, the Jewish people flourished under the protection of Islam. Ninety percent of the Jewish population of the world, ninety percent, survived extinction and destruction because the Muslims protected them. Bernard Lewis, not me, Bernard Lewis, a Jewish Zionist historian who died recently. So why would he say this? This is my claim. My claim is the general treatment towards the Jewish people had been kind. It was amazing. It was beautiful. The Jewish people flourished. They had businesses. They had, you know, they were huge merchants. They were scholars. They were poets. Judah Ha'alevi, where was he born? Judah Ha'alevi was a Spanish poet who wrote poetry. He, the, the, the Jewish golden age was in Spain. And who says so? Scholars like Heinrich Kreitz, who was a German historian, Jewish historian, he states that that for three centuries, from the 10th to the 13th century, this was the Jewish golden age in Al-Andalus, in Spain, under the protection of Islam. So all of these things put together, it is clear that Joseph is repeatedly referring to to exceptions where Jewish people were killed, there were pogroms, there were some massacres, no doubt. Okay, why they happened, what caused them, is a very good question we can look into. But you cannot look at those examples and say this is exactly what happened, which you have acknowledged clearly. You have acknowledged that there were good periods. My claim is the good period overwhelmingly outweighs the bad period. This so, is my point. So very what, quickly, what, let me move one, on. One, 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 two, the golden age for... He's, he's carrying on. He's, he's the, okay. the golden age for Judaism wasn't Al-Andalus. Muslims often say that. The golden age for Jews well, you can, was you can, Moses you can, you can make that and point. then the Talmudic period. Okay, you can the, make, Talmud, the Talmud is our greatest... You can, you can make that point when it's your what, turn. Okay, uh, let me continue point. with what I'm, what, what I'm saying. So coming back to Jizya issue. Yeah. Uh, Joseph, very intelligently, okay, did an ac academic thing which, which I highly respect. I respect this academic attitude towards our sources. I gave uh, a source and I claim that there is one gold dinar, uh, the Jewish people. Do you mind if we move back from the noise? Move this way, please. Bring the camera forward so that we are, we can, I don't have to shout. 
I don't want to shout. Okay, very good. Thank you. Joseph did the right thing by bringing a source from the Muslim uh, Hadith literature where it is stated that they pay four dinars. First of all, I am not too sure about the authenticity of that particular report, but let's assume it's authentic. Let's assume it is authentic. It still helps my point. It still helps my point. Firstly, I gave a very powerful source from Bukhari where Omar said, my advice to my successors is do not overburden the non-Muslims. Do not overburden them. This is our general pattern. This is what we follow. This is our ideal. Okay. Now, Joseph said four dinars, not one. How much is four dinars? Okay. Multiply by, let's say 200 pounds multiplied by four. How much is that? 800 pounds. If even then, even then, you know what I pay? You know what I pay in Britain? You know how much my council tax is? Anyone? Anyone? Over a thousand pounds. I'm paying over a thousand pounds in council tax. Then I'm paying uh, fuel tax. When I put petrol in, 90% is tax. Then I'm paying tax on income tax. Income tax, VAT, value added tax, tax even for shitting. I'm sorry. Okay, even when you go to the toilet, you sit in the toilet, you have to pay tax for that. And this is like, I'm using this as a rhetoric. <laughs> this is rhetoric, by the way. This is not literally true. So I'm saying you pay taxes when you live in a, in a state for the well-being of the state. To run the state, you pay taxes. But even if we were to accept what Joseph said, four dinars, I would say that's fair. If you have a million pounds in your bank account and you're paying 800 pounds every year, right? That's fair. What is a Muslim paying is the question. Is that justice? A Muslim would be paying 2.5% of his wealth, whether it's a million pounds or whether it's a hundred million pounds. This is why people say if the Saudis alone, Saudis alone were to pay 2.5% of their wealth, there would be no poverty on the planet. Unfortunately, it's not happening. There would be no poverty. This is our beautiful Islam. So zakat is a beautiful thing. It is more than what the Jews and the Christians have to pay. This is very, very clear in Jewish sources, sorry, Muslim sources, and you're confirming that. So these are my responses to your point. Go ahead. Oh, Banu Qareda, he mentioned. Oh, Banu Qareda. What happened to Banu Qareda? Again, these are some examples in our history. Banu Qareda was a sub-tribe which consisted of 600 men, okay, and women and children. But there were other Jewish tribes that were in Medina and Joseph confirmed that amazingly. How do we know that? Joseph said that Omar relocated the Jewish people where? Where? Hebron. Hebron, right? So my question is, if Muhammad وسلم, was after Jewish blood, he was bloodthirsty, he wanted the Jewish people to be extinct, where did these Jewish tribes come from for Omar to relocate? The point I'm making is the Jewish tribes were there. Even after Prophet Muhammad had died, he was the sole ruler of Arabia. If he pursued this anti-Jewish policy, the Jewish, the Jewish people were vulnerable. They were very, very weak. Muslims had become an empire. Muslims were the most powerful political entity for the next thousand years. And the Jewish people survived because of the Muslim policy towards them. The Jewish people were a minority, an extreme minority. Okay, when I say extreme minority, I, I mean in terms of number, not an extremist minority, okay? Uh, okay, in terms of numbers. The Muslims, they just had to blow. And the Jewish population would have been over. It would have been, Muslims protected the Jewish people as their brothers, as their cousins, right? And this is why the Jewish people survived today. Okay. This is why they're still there because of the Muslim protection. Again, to emphasize, Bernard Lewis made this claim. You need to go and kick his grave now. So I'm going to have to hurry because my wife's texting me and telling me I need to get home and eat my dinner. But the main point I'd like to make is to come first and foremost back to the main point that you didn't address. And it's very, very good to get into these debates where we bring various different examples. But my fundamental point I'm making is the reason. So the reason that a Muslim pays the zakat is to purify himself. 
purifies yeah. wealth, not himself. So I'll read the. I'll read. You can. You can tell me what this means. Z zakat is the purification of the wealth. The wealth. Okay. Yeah. So pure. Yeah. Which is uh, the, the, so. The, this is because the zakat, and I'm reading from again, Muwatta um, Malik. Um, this is because the zakat is imposed on the Muslims to purify them. So you're saying their wealth. The hadith uh, we says have to them. The Arabic. Yeah. Because zakat, we know as Muslims, is for the purification of the wealth. Okay, fine. Yeah. I'm just, which I, means I'm, the purification. Not, which means the purification I'm, of the self as well. I, I accept that if a Muslim were to read Jewish sources, not speaking the language, relying on translations, and using their own um, cognitive abilities to work out what it means, they may arrive at the wrong conclusion. So I may be doing that. But all I'm doing is reading what it says. Okay. Um, so. Let me go back to her. This is because the zakat is imposed on the Muslims to purify them and to be given back to their poor, their poor, the Muslim poor. Whereas jizya is imposed on the people of the book to humiliate, or you say subdue them. Um, now, any tax system. Oh, I didn't. I forgot to. I actually forgot to comment on that. Do okay, you mind so, if I quickly okay. comment? Okay. So, so the issue of jizya when uh, Joseph was talking about being subdued. Now, Joseph actually. It's referring to chapter 9, verse 29 of the Quran. That's a very interesting verse. When we go to the tafasir, the commentaries written by Muslim scholars, what is the context of that particular verse? Where the verse states that you fight those who do not believe in God and, and, and those people of the book. Now, this verse actually was revealed in the final year of the Prophet's life, okay, when he was directly being threatened by the Romans. The evidence is clear in tafasir. Okay, Ibn Kathir alludes to it, and there are other tafasir that make it very clear that this incident, uh, the incident of the Romans planning to attack the Muslims was there, and this verse was revealed, revealed in response to fight the Romans, in other words, defend yourselves, don't let them come and uh, subdue you, rather you subdue them and charge them jizya. This is the point. You're saying free Palestine. Are you giving it away? Um, anyway. Um, so, to come back to my point. You're not giving it away anytime soon, <laughs> by the looks of it. <laughs> um, so, jizya being imposed to subdue, despite the explanation, it is given as a very, there is a very different reason given for jizya than for zakat. So, we're not talking to begin with an equal system. So, an equal system is I agree. all equal under it's the not, law. It's not equal, yes. And, one, and that, this is my fundamental M point. M in Muslims any are discriminated. No, in any Islamic <laughs> Muslims society... Muslims have to pay more. In, no, it's That's not equal. It's there, actually not equal. There uh, is no fixed jizya. There is no fixed jizya. And I can give you countless examples. Not on me today, I'll have to bring sources. It is of, fixed. Of I Jews, believe it's fixed. Of Jews that had to pay far higher. Now, you can say they paid far higher because... Um, what do you call it? Because can you, it was can you give me an color. example of when no, Jews I, paid higher? So I'll, I'll have to come back next week and do it. Uh, there's a book okay. by there's a book you, called you, Islamic. You there's a book called Islamic Imperialism by a writer called Ephraim Kosh. He goes to great lengths. I can't remember the source, but he gives an example of where um, when Cairo is captured, in the the by, first Islamic uh, the first Islamic conquest that conquered uh, in Cairo. You can tell me who that would be, Rashidun. Yes, yeah. just carry on. Um, Amr bin As captured Cairo. It and wasn't called back, Cairo at the time. And the he writes back and he says there's 10,000 poll tax or uh, jizya paying Jews living here with great villas and great wealth. And he's talking about basically taking the land so they can tax. Have you Jewish have people. you read a book on the Arab conquest of Egypt? No. no. Okay, go and read that book. Um, and you will find plenty of references in there where the, the Christians as well as the Jews actually appreciated the Arab takeover of so, Egypt. So one of the so things, this is something so that is again and, and, and written by with the greatest respect. One of the yeah. things I always um, am suspicious of hmm. is books coming predominantly from Muslim sources. But they, this how, is not a Muslim book. Okay. I just who, mentioned who is it, who is it, written it is written by uh, Alfred J. Butler. Okay. Alfred J. Butler. Okay, no, then that's fine. Uh, the the uh, Arab conquest of Egypt. Please go and read, read it. it. And he rebuts a lot of these accusations and lies against Arab conquest. Uh, you will be fascinated. You'll be so, blown away. Alfred so, J. Butler. So one of the, what, what's yeah. been consistent in Adnan's um, argument is that when the Muslim armies invaded, the Jewish people welcomed them. Yes. And there are certainly cases like um, Toledo and Granada where that was the case. No, even even when Tariq bin Ziyad entered, they Zion the Zohar, yeah. Zion Zohar, a Jewish historian yeah. in his book, states that when the Muslims landed at Gibraltar, 
the Jews of Spain welcomed them so as this, liberators. This is, and this is what my argument is. It's exactly yeah, what it's, it's a Jewish historian no, 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 said no, no, this. No, no, I'm, I'm saying there are definitely examples of that happening. But I'm saying what tends to happen is when Muslims look back on history, they assume it was always like that. Oh, and and then, we never claimed that. Okay. Did, we, did anyone claim okay. that? No. Okay, fine. Yeah. So then we're really I'm saying the overwhelming uh, period of coexistence and uh, peaceful harmony and flourishing of the Jewish people and their prosperity uh, is overwhelming. But the evidence except, is except, overwhelming. Except for all the massacres we went through. Yeah, there were exceptions, no doubt. But, we, we already acknowledged, but, but in a thousand the, years... The main, in a thousand the main years, point, sorry, yeah, yeah. it's my turn. Yeah. <laughs> um, the main point I want to make is if life was so great under Islam, yeah, and life was so good living under Islam and under the caliphate or under Muslim rule... Was it not? It was good at times and bad at times. This is what I'm saying. So all the examples I gave, do you think... So, so can I just make yeah, my point? Yeah, yeah. The minute that Jews could escape Islamic lands, they fled. There were a million Jews living in Muslim countries around 60, 70, no, around 80 years ago. There was a million Jews living there. In Arab lands, I believe there were 850,000 Jews. Today, there's less than 3,000, and they're predominantly in Morocco. The synagogue round the corner from me has more Jews than the entire Arab world. Let that sink in. The synagogue, one synagogue. Now, Let's say, so we have to ask the question, why? Jo Jonathan just is absolutely right, I'm confirming that. Yes, so that's true. Wh why did the Jews leave the Arab world? If life was so good under Islam, why did the Jews flee? Now, some people say, well, they were fleeing for a better life and more money. But we can look at other impoverished parts of Europe where Jews live, impoverished parts of South America where Jews live, where Jews don't live in a high socioeconomic bracket, yet they still don't flee. They're, the Holocaust, six million Jews were killed in the Holocaust in Europe, yet there were more Jews left in Europe, and not the rich nations, places like Ukraine. Um, there were more Jews living there than there are in all of the Arab world. So you have to ask yourself the question, if Muslims don't persecute Jews or didn't persecute Jews, and Islam fundamentally treats Jews well, why did the Jews flee at very the first good, opportunity? Very good question. A million dollars question. And my response will be two million dollars response. Okay. Uh, the, the question is, if Islam was so good to Jews and if the Muslims flourished, uh, and Joseph still uses the word if, despite all the evidence I presented, historic evidence, which cannot be denied and has not been denied by most Jewish historians, amazingly, Joseph still uh, puts a big if on that, no problem. You can go and check all I the sources I've given. I give you given. many of the historians uh, no problem. say the opposite. No. The, it, it, amazingly, it is the Jewish historians who are insisting on the golden age of the House of Israel under Muslim rule. Now, my question is, Joseph, if your question is valid, and if it is an intelligent question, where were the Jews for 1,000 years? from the year 1000 to 1900? Very simple of answer. Yes. So, so, so the where, were the where, were, where, where was the 90% of the range? Jewish population? What's the date range? Just give me the dates again. Uh, let's say 900 to 1900, 1000 years. So 900 to 1900. 1900. So I would, it, it's a change because the majority then began to be in Ashkenaz in Europe. But you're talking the early history when they were- For 1000 years, 90% uh, of the Jewish people, where were they? So they were living where they lived before the advent of Islam. Yeah? They were no. living in the Middle no. East. They were, they were living in Spain, they were, they were living according in Morocco, to Bernard, they were living... According to Bernard Lewis, Babylon, again, again a Jewish ba history. Babylon, so 900... Iraq, Yemen, yes. Egypt, yes. North Africa, yes. even India, Mughal India, and post-Mughal India. India. Yeah, very yeah. few, very few, no doubt. Turkey, okay. So, Joseph is actually confirming that over 90%, I mean, according to Bernard Lewis, over 90% of the Jewish people for 1,000 years lived under the domain of Islam. Why? Why were they not escaping to Africa, for example? That's and, not true. You know, no, no. If they don't want to go to Christian Europe, I can, I, I can understand That's because they true. were being. Wait, wait, wait. Let okay, me finish. Sorry. They were being accused of dicide. Dicide is killing of God. The Jews were persecuted heavily throughout Europe uh, and European history for killing God, Jesus Christ. Okay, and and As the book just killing the and prophets. the Talmud was burnt in public. Uh, in the 13th century, after the fall, Fourth Latin Council of 1215. And many examples. In fact, the reason why the Jews uh, welcomed the Muslim forces as liberators was the Fourth Council of Toledo. The Fourth Council of Toledo, which was held in 633, sorry, 630, uh, 
yeah, 633, a year after the Prophet of Islam's death. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, died in 632. 633, there was a Catholic council held in Toledo, in the city of Toledo in Spain, where it was decreed by the Catholic Church that all the Jewish people have to give away their children to the Catholic Church to be raised as Catholics. So the Jewish children were forcefully converted into Christianity. When the Muslims came in in 711, literally, let's say, almost 80 years after this incident, the Jews welcomed them as liberators, according to Zion Zohar, another Jewish historian, right? So all of this uh, put together, we see that the Jewish people were happy under Muslim rule. How do we know that? By looking at their testimonies, which I have already quoted earlier, from place to place, Address person question, to person, uh, Jewish rabbis are saying, we are happy, we are pleased, our living standards are even better than theirs, the I, Muslims. I've got so, to go in so, two minutes. Okay, okay, Address no, the question. Uh, uh, which was after, speak? after, now, now why did the Jewish people leave the Muslim lands? The doing of Israel. Because what happened was, when the Zionists took over after the British mandate, they took over the land of Palestine and they conducted massacres of innocent Palestinians, there was a backlash. You know, what brothers like Joseph failed to understand or possibly deliberately failed to acknowledge is the political milieu, the political situation of the Middle East at the time. Okay, Muslim didn't suddenly wake up one day and say, okay, hold on a second, we're gonna go for all the Jews now. No, it doesn't work like that. They had a thousand years to do it. They had a thousand years to do it when they had armies like Mamluks, the Ottomans, the, you know what the Ottomans were? Do you know their military strength? You know what they had? You have no idea. They, they were, they, they besieged Vienna, <coughs> thousands of miles away from, from uh, Constantinople. You're telling me they couldn't see the Jews at home? At, right at the doorstep? They could see them, right? What happened in 1940s is the question. Why suddenly all the Jewish people started to leave Muslim lands? Because they were blaming the Zionists, like Orthodox Jews from Stamford Hill, and Golders Green today are daily and nightly condemning the Zionists for doing things in their name, which they completely disown. And we cherish these Jewish brothers and sisters so, who are great people, who are simply disowning the Zionists like we the Muslims disown ISIS, right? ISIS equals Zionists, okay? And, and, and speaking <laughs> against the atrocities of the Zionists against the Palestinian people is not anti-Semitism because there are Jewish, I have Jewish friends, they are not Zionists and they condemn all the atrocities against the Palestinian people, right? So this is what happened in the 1940s. Okay. A context, a historic context, which is not acknowledged. So why did they suddenly wake up? So this is what happened. That's why many of these Jewish people started to leave Muslim lands because they could see what, the, what was happening in Palestine at the time is going to have an impact on their lives. So they started to leave for lands where they felt safe. And I don't blame them. I don't blame them. And uh, they were doing what was best for them. And, and we, to, do, to this day, we have nothing but a feeling of sympathy a feeling of love and compassion towards the Jewish people. Despite all the atrocities in... Uh, just in uh, uh, this brother, Gerd. So what's going on? How are you? Thank yeah, you. I'm he fine. came just to say, how are you? How are you? He is, he's, he's Jew, by the way. How are you? He's Jewish. Okay. Yeah, he's Jewish. And uh, he is anti-Israel. That's one of the things. Oh, there you go. Thank you. What a timely... What a timely... What a timely entry. Perfect timing. Okay. So he's got... He's got the, as well, he is well learned about okay. history he's will learn about many things about right all, all so, so at least i don't look like at least you got to go at least i don't look said two minutes ago okay. 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 Yeah. i'm just yeah. going to yeah. make I'm, my, my I'm, closing, so. oh, wait, wait, wait. my closing comments. my final statement and then you can come in uh, joseph so as i said to emphasize the point we have nothing but a feeling of sympathy, love and compassion towards the Jewish people. In fact, the constitution of Medina, the document agreed upon between the Prophet of Islam and the Jewish people of Medina, it states the final sentence is that Muslims are commanded to extend uh, a hand of sympathy towards the Jewish people, right? This is exactly what we believe in. We were never an enemy of the Jewish people. We will never be the enemy of the Jewish people. Politics, circumstances, geopolitical events can change feelings from time to time, from place to place. That doesn't mean that Muslim civilization is anti-Semitic. It is, it is not. It has no, never perfect. been so.